Hey there, here we go into graphing polar equations, and this is going to be very, very rad. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to not only graph them by plugging in a couple of key points, but also do what I like to call follow the radial arm. And I've highlighted that here below. Is it important that you have an exact polar curve? Not in most BC Calc classes. Some Calc 2 classes get into this. But in most BC Calc classes, it's about getting down the basic figure of the graph so that you're able to then do the calculus to it. We'll see that in a little while, but for now, let's rock some graphing. So first, we're going to start out with the family of R equals C. So C is some constant. So that could be R equals 5, R equals 3, R equals negative 2. It could be any constant there. Circles with the center at the origin of the pole is the best way to describe this. So you're going to have circles with a radius of C, whatever that is. Now, let's check this out. R equals 3, then, would be an example. How do we graph stuff like this? Well, you can make a table of data or just a chart. And even though the coordinates read R comma theta, our functions are actually plug in theta, get out R. And what I do is I go around the unit circle and I use some key points, not all of them, but just some of them. So I'm going to do 0, pi over 2, pi. 3 pi over 2, I try to stick to the 90 degree angles, right, the quarters of the unit circle, and 2 pi. And what you'll notice is that if the equation is r equals 3, that means that no matter what, the radius is 3. So at theta value of 0, we've got a radius of 3. That's here. And if you're having trouble plotting your polar points, go back to my lesson in lesson 4 on how to plot polar coordinates. All right, so pi over 2. r again is still 3 there, so we go out to 3 at pi over 2. And we rotate around a pi, r is still 3. That's here. And 3 pi over 2, r is still 3. So no matter where we go, r is 3 until we get around to 2 pi, and r is still 3. Now, the points are 3 no matter where we go. right? r is just 3 everywhere, and you could keep plotting points anywhere you want. And what you're going to end up with is a circle that starts out here and goes around and around and around. Let me see if I can etch that out pretty well. And just goes through all those points. And you end up with a nice, perfect circle of radius 3. Of course, if I'm drawing it, it won't be perfect. All right, that's it. That's r equals 3. So r equals any number is a radius of 3. It's a circle centered at the what we call the pole, or the origin, of that radius. So I'm going to convert this now uh, into rectangular form, which is pretty cool, just to prove that it makes sense that this is a circle centered at 0 of radius 3, but in rectangular form. To do that, if we square both sides of this equation, we get r squared equals 3 squared which would be the same as saying r squared equals 9. And so far, you're probably like, what does that do for us? Recall that r squared in polar form is the same as x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. And oh, there we go. We've got a center of a circle at 0, 0, radius of the square root of 9, which is 3. It's been proven. And just to remind you of where the heck I'm getting x squared plus y squared from, this is r. That right there is x, that right there is y. x squared plus y squared equals to r squared by the Pythagorean theorem. All right, let's keep rocking and rolling. So now we've got a new family of curves. We're going to go over three families of curves in this video. The second one being theta equals a number. Now this one's not so bad. It basically means that the angle is always set at whatever that value is. So these are lines that go through the origin. And we'll go over a particular example in a second. Um, but first, I want to kind of mention that the slope of any line going through the origin is always going to be tangent of theta. And I want to show you why. So let's take as an example, I don't know, theta equals pi over 4. So theta equals pi over 4 would be, well, the angle pi over 4 is roughly here. So that means that r can be any value it wants to be. But no matter what, theta has got to be equal to pi over 4. So r could be equal to 5. r could be equal to negative 6. r is going to be all real numbers but we're going to be fixed along the angle pi over 4. When we're negative values, we'll end up with points on the opposite direction of pi over 4. This would be, again, theta equals pi over 4. So that goes in both directions. Now, the question becomes, why is it that the slope is tangent of theta? Well, if we have one point is going to be at the origin, that's the point 0, 0. We're looking at this in terms of rectangular coordinates right now. And we have any point on that line is going to be x comma y. We know that the slope of this line is going to be, well, rise over run. And if you just kind of take a look at the triangle that this thing forms, the rise would be y minus 0. So that's rise over run, using the normal slope formula. The rise is y minus 0. 
And then the run would be x minus 0, right? That would be x minus 0 using the slope formula. And when we simplify that, that's y over x. Okay, now why is that important? Well, no matter what, all lines of the form theta equals a constant will go through the origin because there's no plus, no minus, no kind of shifting going on there. It's just theta equals that number. So we're going to go through the origin, meaning all of the lines will have a point zero, zero, and then some point x comma y, meaning all the slopes are y over x. Why is y over x important? Well, because tangent of theta is equal to y over x, which is equal to the slope. So therefore, the slope of any line theta equals c is going to be tangent of whatever that angle is. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I think it's awesome. I think it's absolutely awesome. You see in the triangle here, too, that tangent theta is y over x, which is our slope. Awesome. All right, so let's graph one. So how do we graph theta equals 5 pi over 6? Not as bad as it looks. You go to the angle pi, 5 pi over 6, which is roughly here, right? We're just doing an approximation, roughly there. And we're going to go infinitely in that direction. That's if r is positive, we'd be extending out here. But what happens when r is negative? We'd extend out infinitely in this direction as well. And that's the line theta equals 5 pi over 6. It's a very simple one to graph out. We don't even have to plug in points. But if you were plugging in points, here's what it would look like. You'd have theta. You'd have r. And here, theta is always 5 pi over 6, no matter what. Always 5 pi over 6. And r is any number we want it to be. It could be 7. It could be 1 half. It could be negative 2. It could be negative 3. Whatever it is, when it's positive, r that is, we're extending out in the 5 pi over 6 direction. When it's negative, we're extending out in the opposite of the 5 pi over 6 direction. That's it. So theta equals a number is going to be a line through the origin with slope tangent of theta. All right, so now we've looked at r equals a number. That's a circle at the origin. Theta equals a number. That's going to be a line going through the origin. And we have one other kind of problem. These are your basic circles not centered at the origin. But they do come up significantly enough. In fact, all the functions we're going to go over are the ones that you're expected to know for the BC exam and in your calculus class. So it's not necessarily that you need to be able to graph each by hand perfectly, unless you have a teacher that wants you to do that, in which case I've got you covered. Um, it's more so that you need to be able to recognize these functions and say, oh, r equals a number. That's a circle centered at the origin. Or r equals a cosine theta. That's a circle that is symmetric about the x-axis with diameter a. you got to understand these concepts and be able to apply them and recognize them. So let's go over the last type of family of curves in this video uh, before we get into the other two types in a little bit. So we've got circles with diameter of a. So that would be r equals a cosine theta and r equals a sine theta. Now, a could technically be negative. Absolutely. I would flip these circles over in an opposite direction. It's not impossible for that to do. So I want to be very clear. a can be negative. I'm just saying that the diameter of the circles will be a given that a is positive. If a is negative, you take the absolute value to get the diameter. Okay, so a couple of things to note that's very important. Functions with only cosine in them in polar form. So polar functions with cosine and only cosine in them, no other kinds of trig functions, will be symmetric about the x-axis. Notice a cosine theta is symmetric about that. That will carry through in other types of functions as well beyond circles. Functions with only sine are symmetric about the y-axis, which is really nice because sine is the y value on our unit circle, uh, cosine is the x value on our unit circle. So hopefully that sticks pretty well. It's an important idea. Here's the general picture of what these things look like. You would graph out the entire graph actually from zero to pi. So unlike the other circles we looked at with r equals a number where we needed zero to two pi to do the full rotation, here we only need zero to pi. We'll see why that is very shortly. Same with sine theta. So these are the general forms of them. All right, let's see one in action. Graph r equals 2 sine theta. We'll talk about why the graph makes sense. OK, so I've got that polar graph paper for us right there. And if you don't have a polar you know, coordinate plane like that, that's OK. You can just approximate your values. Theta is my input, r is my output. Now, depending on the severity of specificness that your teacher wants, you might need to not just go with the values I'm going with. They might want you to go 0, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3. They might want you to go very specific. Follow whatever they want you to do. And please, as I've been saying, study your unit circle for the love of trigonometry. OK, so we're going to start out at theta equals 0. When I plug that in, I'm plugging all numbers into that. Sine of 0, 0 times 2 is 0. So I'm going to start out with the point 0, 0. 
that's right here. Then I'm going to plug in now, I'm going to plug in like one point along here, but eventually I'm going to stop plugging in these points right there. Now, right away, it's going to be symmetric about the y axis, we know that, and it's going to have a diameter of two, or a maximum r value of two, because sine is at most one. So I've got, let's say, I don't know, pi over six. Sine of pi over six is one half, of two is one. So I've got the point one pi over six. Okay, let's keep going. And then I'm going to go to, let's say, I don't know, pi over three. So sine of pi over three is root three over two times two is root three. That's roughly 1.7. So that's out to almost two, but not quite over to pi over three, roughly right there. It's an approximate. And then we'll go to pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one times two is two. So we're at pi over two, two. And here you go. Now use symmetry when you're graphing. You could then just complete your circle right away and say, oh, okay, I see what's going on here. It's gonna complete the circle. So I'm just gonna go right ahead and say, okay, we go to, let's say five pi over six. Sine of five pi over six is one half times two is one. And pi, uh, just pi, sine of pi is zero. So pi zero. So five pi over six, one, that's here. And then back to zero. So you see how the values get less and less and less. When I do these problems, Sometimes I have a unit circle in my head and I'm thinking, well, sine grows in value as we go to pi over two. So that means the R value is growing as we rotate and then shrinking back towards zero as we get back towards pi. All right, that's it. That gives us our nice rough circle, symmetric about the Y axis. Why is it that this thing doesn't keep graphing as we go into, let's say, the um, other pi values? So let's say that you go to like seven pi over six. Watch what happens. Sine of seven pi over six is negative one half times two is negative one. So you'd go to seven pi over six in the direction of, of that, but then it's negative one. Whoopsh, you end up back there. Four pi over three would do the same thing. It would reflect back. Three pi over two would be negative two, which gets you back here. All of these values reflect back to the other side. That's why if we went from zero to two pi, we'd actually rotate twice around the graph. Isn't that cool? I think it's pretty neat. All right, so last but certainly not least, we're going to do r equals 3 cosine theta, and we're going to rock it. Now, with doing r equals 3 cosine theta, I'm going to start to not do every single little point like I did in the last one. So we get theta, we get r. I'm going to start out with 0. 3 times cosine of 0 is 3. So that's the point angle of 0, radius of 3. Now, notice there's only cosine in this, so we are going to be symmetric about the x-axis. Again, I'm going to plug in another point here. Uh, let's go with pi over 3. Cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half times 3 is 3 halves. So we're going out 3 halves. It's 1 and a half in the direction of pi over 3. And then we'll go to pi over 2. So what's happening here is cosine is getting smaller and smaller, starting out at its max value at r equals 3. Cosine of pi over 2 is just 0. Oh, so it kind of tucks itself in there like so. It's not a perfect drawing, but you know, it's not bad. So then, wait, I thought it only went from 0 to pi. What's happening here? Well, as we get over to the other side now, let's go to 2 pi over 3. Let's see what happens. Cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half times 3 is negative 3 halves. So even though the intended direction is 3 halves or 1 and a half in the direction of 2 pi over 3, we get negative 3 halves. So that goes here and across in the opposite direction. Oh. In fact, on the unit circle, all cosine values, just kind of keeping this as a picture in picture in my head, all unit circle values here are negative. So then as I go to 5 pi over 6, cosine of 5 pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. This is going to be 3, sorry, negative root 3 over 2. So this will be negative root 3 over 2. That's roughly negative 2.5-ish. That's a real rough estimate. So normally we'd be around 2.5 in this direction, but now we're going to flip all the way around and be down roughly around here, because we're negative. And then as we come back over to pi, that's negative one times three is negative three. So normally we'd be out here, but now we're gonna go all the way over here, and you see how we complete the circle. Isn't that cool? And as you continue on in this quadrant, you're gonna get all negative cosine values. So even though our intended direction might be seven pi over six, we're gonna end up over here. And the intended direction might be four pi over three, but we're gonna end up over there. Three pi over two, back to zero. And then we end up on all the positive values, which brings us on a second loop of the circle. So very neat to understand how the radial arm moves in all of this. 
Don't just plug in values and be like, oh, I got that. I'll memorize it. See how that radial arm moves as I've been explaining how we end up with opposite sides because of negative r values. So it's almost like I'm imagining points being delivered along these radial uh, measures or arms and seeing how the opposite values reflect over here and give us these points until we complete our loop. All right, very cool. So let's finish this one off. Uh, I guess at this point would be a, a nice point to stop. So we've gone over circles, r equals a number, theta equals a number, lines with the slope of tangent of theta, and then circles where you have a diameter of whatever this value is, and we learn that cosine graphs, only cosine in the function, would be symmetric about the x-axis, that'll be valuable later, and sine graphs that'll be symmetric about the y-axis. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.